no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, join me this Saturday for our live Raiders watch party. Subscribe, turn on those notifications while we watch maybe Nathan Biederman, Marcus Mariota take down the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to be live for the entire game. We're going to have t-shirt giveaways. We're going to have a whole bunch of giveaways thanks to Black Sunday Shop. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that sub button. All right, this first one's coming in from Gustavo Rivera Hernandez III. Score prediction for Raiders versus Seahawks. Well, the over-under in this game, I believe, is 37.5 points as I'm filming this. But I'm going to go with a lower score. I'm probably just going to sit here and say it's going to be like 17-13. to 13. And it's going to be one of those uglier games just from top to bottom simply because the offensives usually aren't quite up to speed with some of the defenses and quarterback plays lack lackluster. So uh, I'm going to go low scoring game, but I got the Raiders ultimately winning this one 17-13. What I want you guys to do right now is go down in those comments and try to predict the score. Raiders, Seahawks, I was going to say Monday Night Football, Saturday Night Football, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific. Let me know down in those comments. Let's get some score predictions going, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this Saturday morning. All right, we got Slider Holiday. This towards for everyone, take a shot. Raiders! So we are $9, $9 short of making everyone here in the chat sports studio take a shot. So that's something to think about. All right, let's go to this next one. Rustin Long, drink up. We got a Raiders in there. You know what, Rustin? You know, everyone watching right now, I appreciate you. I'm just going to take this. Jeremy, you can take one uh, a little bit later on. Let's go to the next question coming in here. Ah. Uh, uh, Milky, is that right? I can't read. Does Carl Joseph beat out Merrick and Abram for a starter spot later on in the season? Carl Joseph has actually looked really good, though, thus far this offseason. I don't really think that that's what the Raiders want, though it's totally not out of the realm. I'd probably give it one chalky head, 25% chance of happening, though Carl Joseph will get some playing time. Maybe not always over Abram, but Joseph will get some playing time this year. Let's go to Richard. What kind of picture is that? Uh, can Stoner make the 53 if he performs very good in the preseason? I mean, maybe if he performed well, but if you just want to know if he performed very good, I don't think Stoner is going to end up making the team. Now, he's probably the seventh wide receiver, maybe the eighth wide receiver on the roster, but I, I think that the Raiders are only going to keep six guys, and that's Willie Sneed, Zay Jones, Brian Edwards, Hunter Renfro, uh, Henry Ruggs, and then John Brown. Those are going to be the six guys that make the team. Alacran's Gaming, which offensive player and defensive player do you think will surprise you on Saturday? It's a really good question. I'll say in terms of surprise, Javen White's going to surprise a lot of people because he's a really good linebacker in this system. I want to see what Darius Phylon could do at defensive tackle. And then on the offensive side of the football, if Brian Edwards is out there, he is an athletic freak. When he's healthy, he's a special player. Trey Regas, though, the running back's a very popular name that's going to start picking up during uh, you know, the preseason. Trey Regas, that's, that's the name I'm going to go with. Dexter Smith, do you think that Henry Ruggs, with one G, could get a 1,000-yard season if he continues what he's doing? I mean, you like to hope that sooner or later uh, he'll get there. Obviously, if you draft a receiver in the top 12, you want him to be a 1,000-yard receiver. It took Cliff Branch two years. I'm going to give Henry Ruggs two years. But I'm hoping that, yes, yeah, sooner or later, a 1,000-yard season. Now, if you guys love the shirt that I have on, it's from BlackSundayShop.com. Go ahead. Get yourself a Raider shirt. These things sell really, really quick. If you want the best deal, though, on the Internet right now in terms of Raiders gear, also use code Mitch at checkout. You're going to get some free Raiders um, accessories. But these guys launch new t-shirts all the time. They are the coolest, the most badass Raiders shirts on the market. Most of them are under $30. They all come in all great shapes, sizes, like I'm telling you. They have so many awesome shirts that I can't even begin to explain it to you. But they were telling me, hey, go ahead, start talking about the Marcus Allen shirt. It's my favorite shirt that I own from them, and I have like 12 of them personally. But shout out to Black Sunday Shop. They do a lot of really awesome stuff. It's blacksundayshop.com. Go ahead and get the Marcus Allen shirt like this one or any other shirts. I promise y'all you're going to love them. What up, Jose? Let's take a shot. Love you, Mitch. Jose, I will take a shot for you because we got to 
over $200 in Super Chat. So at the end of this mailbag and at the end of the live show, I'm going to get the entire Chat Sports team in here, and we're going to take a shot because we got over 200 But, Jose, appreciate you, my man. Speaking of Super Chats, Rashimo, I went to the Raiders training camp at Allegiant Foster. At Allegiant, Foster Moreau looks solid. Do you think he gets a lot of targets this year? What do you consider a lot of targets? So... That's that's my question to you, and what do I mean by that is like 35 targets. Like if if Moreau can come away with 35 targets, it's probably going to be 25 grabs, five touchdowns. Like I like Moreau a lot, but Derek Carr and has always been able to prove that he's going to spread the love. The only way that he gets more targets than that is if Brian Edwards goes down or if Darren Waller goes down, and I don't want those guys to go down. What up, Daniel? So since Jose and Rush. Both send in two $10 Super Chats basically at the same time. And because we crossed 200, I'll take a shot to that. And if you're wondering why there's some random guy walking around Dallas, Texas without his Black Sunday shirt on, it's because I got trashed on the Raiders report. All right, what up, Daniel? ESPN has Jacobs 22, Waller 2, Carr 24 of 25, and no wide receiver in the top 50. Is ESPN on drugs? Well, I don't know if they are on drugs or not, but I get, are you saying like Jacobs is the 22nd best running back? Like, that's wild to me. I don't know if you're talking about fantasy because there's no way Carr is the twenty is 24th. I mean, maybe in fantasy I could potentially see it because they don't anticipate him to throw the ball a lot. And then no receiver in the top 50. I don't really hate that one as much because the Raiders have a lot of unproven players, but... The Jacobs one's wild. Waller, obviously, he's deserving that. And then Carr, 24. Are you you, you got to be talking about fantasy. That's the only way I can wrap my mind around this. What up, K-Rob17? Will Bo Scarborough play preseason? Oh, yeah. Bo Scarborough is going to be a fun running back that plays in the preseason because he's like a bigger dude. He's going to try to run over some of those players. And in the preseason, not that you can get away with it, but... Bo Scarborough was really good in high school and in college just because he was bigger than a lot of other people. Then you come to the NFL and everyone's basically your same size and you got to do more than just run over players. But yes, Bo Scarborough is going to get some work in the preseason. What up, Scott? Scott Brogan. Mitch, would it be beneficial if the Raiders signed Golden Tate to deepen the wide receiver core? I'm good on Golden Tate. Uh, I don't really think he's going to be the right fit for what we have. If you're looking for a slot receiver, you kind of already have one in Willie Sneed. And when you talk to a lot of other players about Golden Tate in terms of being a locker room, being a good teammate, not many people would back him up on that. All right, what up, Joe? I want a Raiders shirt with Mitch in it. So you want a Raiders shirt with Mitch in it. I'll, uh, I'll send that screenshot to Black Sunday Shop because I actually talked to, talk to them about potentially making a Raiders Report t-shirt. So, Joe, I appreciate your super, and I'm going to send that to the guys at Black Sunday Shop. And if I do get one, the, I'll, I'll, get you, I'll get you the shirt. That one will be on me. All right, let's go to Dick Johnson. Which players are you most excited to watch this weekend? Well, Dick, I would probably go out and say somebody like Brian Edwards, if he's out there, one of the defensive tackles, maybe a Darius Phylon. Look for somebody like Tanner Muse, Javen White. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be too much of a dick, but I wish I could see Mariota play a little bit more than Nathan Peterman. Those are probably all the dick jokes I got. Which player are you most excited to see? Oh, okay, so we're just going to go it that way and shout at the Chugs. But out of all the players in the preseason for this game, which one are you most excited to watch? Raiders versus Seahawks. Hopefully you're tuning into my watch party. Remember, 15 minutes before kickoff. What up, Zach Forte? I think that's how you pronounce it. Wouldn't you rather see what Edwards can develop into instead of spending big money on Adams or Thomas? The, the answer to that is yes and no. I don't think that Brian Edwards will ever be a top five receiver like Devontae Adams or like Michael Thomas. It's not ripping on him. It's just I don't think that's where he's ever going to be. You're hoping that Edwards can be a top 15, maybe a top like 12 receiver. That's probably his ceiling. But I'm with you where you really have to think about if Ruggs breaks out and if Edwards both break out this year and like we're like, dude, these guys are just top notch receivers, then maybe you don't go out and sign Adams or maybe you don't go out and trade for Thomas. But I am confident that Devontae Adams is different because him and Carr's relationship to me would be a whole bunch of a – it'd be a different thing to me. Like I think that no matter what, Devontae Adams is a sure thing. I can't say that yet about Edwards. What up, Dale Webb? How do you think Lynn Bowden would have been if the Raiders would have given him a chance? So, like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, they didn't give him a chance, but apparently he didn't, you know – 
from people that I've talked to that are close to the Raiders have given me a 4-1-1 on this one, which was basically he didn't show up to camp. He wasn't as athletic as what the Raiders personally thought, and he wasn't good at being able to pick up the playbook. I get 2020 was kind of a crazy year, and I get a lot of that kind of stuff. However, they weren't really sure that Bowden was going to be a good fit in Las Vegas because of some of the off-the-field stuff. But I trust the Raiders. I actually wasn't that crazy about the Lynn Bowden picks, but we'll, we'll see ultimately what happens. All right, Ryan Hushman, what up, man? Do you think it's possible to go 12-5 and five this season on the top end? Possible, yes. Likely, no. I have the Raiders coming out winning 9, 10 games this year. I mean, it's a tough schedule, though we've seen them been able to play really solid football, and I've said this 100 times on the show. If you can beat the Chiefs, you can beat everyone. The issue is you need to show up against the Jets, the Falcons. You can't get beat by Atlanta by 37 points and then expect people to, you know, sit here and say, like, that's a dominant team or that's a team I should fear. The Raiders will take that next step when they can play in a complete 17-game schedule, not just the first half of the year. 12-5, and five, that was a bit of a stretch. What about uh, which offensive player and defensive player do you think will surprise you on Saturday? So I think I actually already answered this one, um, but I'll say again, we'll, we'll go here with either Brian Edwards, maybe Zay Jones will impress some people, Dylan Stoner will be a name to watch, Trey Regis, and then on defense, Javen White will see Tanner Muse. Maybe somebody like Darius Phylon. All right, y'all, so preseason week one odds. The Raiders, their favorites by one and a half points. The over-under in this game, 37 and a half. What I want you guys to do is let me know who you got in this one. Hopefully, it's the Raiders, and hopefully you're tuned in watching our watch party 15 minutes before kickoff. Let's go to James B. Mitch, what do you think of Art and Key talking trash about the Raiders? Mr. Preseason is at it again. I think Arden Key is the perfect example of a boy who is not willing to be able to admit when he's been wrong. Don't get me like I understand the Raiders' defense has been bad. For those of you that don't know, Arden Key basically said that he was excited to get out of Las Vegas, though nobody wanted him here really anyway. He has talent. He's just always been lazy. He's never been able to put in the work. It's why he hasn't succeeded yet, and it's why he won't succeed in the NFL. So Arden, don't worry, man. You won't be on the 49ers for that much longer either. You'll be looking for a new job soon. Let's go to Madman Raider. Big shout out to Tom Flores and Charles Woodson making the Hall of Fame. Hell yeah, man. Everyone right now, type TF for Tom Flores and type CW or 24 for Charles Woodson. It took, what, 26 years for Flores to get in? That's about 26 years too long as far as I'm concerned. And I'm happy that the GOAT got in. Both made unbelievable speeches. Both made Raider Nation very proud. And from watching some of the parades, watching some of the things that went down, Raider Nation showed out, and like there is no doubt that if somebody's going to Canton or if somebody is like repping, if you want to know how much Raider Nation loves you, watch Flores, watch the Woodson ceremony, watch the parade, the amount of people there, the support. It's why Raider Nation's unlike anything I've ever seen. Let's go to James B. Mitch, I ordered some of that fancy cereal. Hope <laughs> it tastes like maple waffles. So you're talking about Magic Spoon. If anybody out there wants the Magic Spoon hookup that James B is talking about, it's magicspoon.com slash Raiders. So it's $5 off your very first order. It's healthy cereal. I promise you guys will like it. The maple waffles one, I actually haven't tried yet, though I had somebody in the studio here earlier chomping down on it, and from the, as loud as they were chomping, it sounded pretty good. Let's go to Jason. Who do you think will start for the Seahawks in the preseason game? At quarterback, I'm going to say Geno. Um, I, it's going to be weird to see the Seahawks. I don't know if DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, I'd be shocked if Russell Wilson's out there. They're probably going to be running a lot of their backups as well. They don't have as many rookies. They had only three rookies this past year, but from a quarterback position standpoint, I would say look out for Geno. All right, Bryant G., who would you rather have next season, Adams or Thomas? Give me Devontae Adams. And the reason why I go Devontae Adams, the chemistry with Derek Carr, and Adams is a dominant player that's not a diva. Michael Thomas is just proving time and time again recently that he's acting like a diva. Madman Raider, do we trade Mariota before the season begins? No. I mean, the only way you're trading Mariota at this point is if somebody offers you something better than a second-round pick. I'm talking a 2022 second, a 2022 first. I don't see that happening. I know a lot of people were linking Mariota to the Colts, and sure there was interest there. If I'm the Colts, I pick up the phone, I try to call Phillip Rivers, try to get him out of retirement, or I go trade for somebody like, I don't know, Jimmy Garoppolo, even Nick Foles. And the reason why Nick Foles might be their best option, he's the third-string quarterback on the Bears. I think Mariota is better than Foles, but Frank Reich, Nick Foles, they have that connection from their time in Philly. All right, LI Raider 3-1-2. 
What do you think is our ceiling? I see a divisional playoff. I mean, this team can make the playoffs, and when I did my projections, I based that on what I think. Ceiling is always Super Bowl, right? Like, you hope that a team can always win the Super Bowl. I mean, we've seen crazy things happen. Though, seventh in, seventh in the AFC, squeaking into the playoffs, that's where I see ultimately this team going down. All right, y'all, if I missed your question, I'm sorry. You can yell at me on Instagram, at MitchellRens365, or you can yell at our producer, Jeremy, on Twitter. You can hit him up at J.I. Beadling. His nickname is Chugs because he chugged, I think it was a it was a beer on literally his like first day here at Chat Sports on the Raiders Report. So, yeah, it was on the Raiders Report. So go ahead, give Jeremy a follow on Twitter at J.I. Beadling. And if I missed your question, it's at MitchellRens365.